Ready to do another episode of Box Office and Bagasms. We had uh, fun tearing up that last uh, Transformers, series, Transformers shit. Yeah. It was so good. Uh, we have guests. Get your, get your, we have get yourself ready. Allen in special guest studio. today. Yeah, special guest. He's here Al. just to rip into James Cameron. He's yeah. ready. No stone is going to be left unturned. Yeah, and obviously, as you guys can see, we're going to be reviewing the Avatar and soon to be series uh, because they are shooting three more sequels back to back. One of them's supposed to come out December next year. Or yeah, something like that. same time as Star Wars. It'll be a very interesting box office week. Yeah, you know, it, Star Wars and the second Avatar. It's kind of interesting because like the sequels were supposed to be shot back to back, and they were supposed to come out like back in like 2015 or like 2014 or something like that, and they didn't. So it's just like I don't know. James Cameron was busy with all of his money. Is that it? I don't. I don't. I'm too busy being a rich bitch. Is that it? I think no, so. Not to rip too much on James Cameron, he is actually a very talented director. He brought Terminator 2 and Aliens. I mean, I mean yeah. iconic yeah. pop culture. Except for this shit. Except yeah, for this shit. This there was a lot to talk about with, like, with Avatar. Exception. Yeah, with, like, with Avatar, it's, like a, it's a special case because like, this movie made $2 billion. I think like $2.5 billion. Yeah, well, it was two point, it was $2 billion on the original, and then they got re-released with extra footage. Yeah. And then it ended up bringing it up to about two point five or two point six with the re-release. Yeah, so I mean, this movie is like is the most is the highest grossing movie of all time, and I, yeah, I think it's also the high, one of the highest grossing domestic movies of all time. It's mm -hmm. not anymore. Yeah. Now it's uh, Star Wars: The Force Awakens, but I mean, this movie made a ridiculous amount of money. But like back in like 2010, when we saw this movie, I mean, it looks incredible. It had the yes, best yeah. Mm -hmm. But the story is shit. Not that it's much shit. substance. Well, I mean, like, that, like I think that's why it was so well is because it was so impressive to look at. It was a very impressive looking movie. And yeah, a lot of people was, were like, "Oh, that looks so like, It was one of the first man. first major films to be entirely in 3D. It, yeah. it started the whole 3D movie trend that uh, oh, is yeah. now sort of dying yeah, down, like, thankfully. Yeah, and a lot of movies like tried to copy that trend of like Avatar like after it came out. It's like we got to make like an all CGI movie that has just like 3D in it. And... Yeah, and I mean it was cool and it looked crazy, but it was just it's fucking poke Pocahontas with blue people, and it, <laughs> yeah, basically, it basically is Pocahontas with this shit ton of CGI and like fantasy realm and all that yeah. kind of crap. It's just it's annoying, just... and I mean, like, it isn't. It isn't even a great like. It's it's really predictable, like, cliche story. Like, yeah. this guy's gonna go enter in this like. Oh, then if they enters this tribe and they fall in love, and then oh no, the humans don't like us anymore. <laughs> but I can save yeah, you, like, and it's just like it's a really it's like predictable. A with wall, of sort Yeah, it's of like thing. a fucking Kevin Costner <laughs> shit movie. I hate it. I like Kevin Costner. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Costner's a great man. We'll leave Kevin Costner out of this yeah, one, just so long as that's clear. I know. I think about this up yesterday, but and I, I wasn't wasn't sure, but you were saying that James Cameron's pretty prolific about like not making violent films. Yeah. Anymore. So I, in my violence. mind, I think Cameron proves himself a hypocrite here. <laughs> at 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 one point, you know, he's he's showing all this stylized violence and it's gratuitous and it it looks gorgeous, all these violent actions. But at the same time, his message is meant to be anti-violence. So. It's hard to have best of both worlds if you want to you want to glorify this violence and all this cool future tech, but at the same time you want to say yes. violence is bad. It makes it makes the message it, a bit muddled to say of, the least. It reminds me of Sean Penn. He came out with that one movie in 2015, The Gunman. Yeah, The Gunman, and he, before he made that movie, he was very outspoken about like we, Sean we, Penn does not like violence. We need stronger gun laws. We need to make we need all these stronger gun laws and that's fine to have that opinion, but then he goes and makes a movie where he kills a bunch of people with guns. And I'm like, "Oh, so you're going to lecture me about Stronger gun laws, they go make a couple million using a gun in a movie. Like, it's a really... And there's a lot of this hypocrisy, especially James Cameron sometimes can be caught up in that sort of thing where I'm just I like... Never, I never really I never really think that much about it. Like, when when I go to see a movie, I tune out when it comes to politics, unless it's like a movie like, uh, was it, like, God's Not Dead and, like, those movies where, where it's, it's just like, like blatantly... That's not it's a It's like movie. pushing it in your face. Mm -hmm. It's like trying to force-feed you a bunch of garbage and whatever. <laughs> and I'm just, I just, I can't, like, handle that. Now, this movie was on a budget of, like, $237 million. Which was which huge like, back which then. Which yeah. it is huge. It's not the biggest budget movie of all time. In 2010, that was pr pretty huge, though. It, yeah. it is pretty freaking huge. And so, for the I money mean, it made imagine, from that, that's like, incredible. But here's the thing, though. That's just production budget. Production budgets don't include the marketing budget. Yeah. This movie, they spent a shit ton of money on the marketing as well. I don't know how much it was, but it had to have been, like, at least, like, 
what, like $80 million or something like that, maybe more, maybe a little bit I think less. this movie was just a classic example of everybody got caught up in the hype of it. Yeah, and then, and then they got later, there, and it was hard to say we don't like this once yeah. you watched it. I saw it twice in the theaters. I didn't see it more than two times. That was like, I was just like, the story, I mean, it looks really awesome, and it's got a cool action sequences, but the, there's no substance to the story. I saw it twice. I saw it once, and then I saw it again with my dad. Yeah, the first I, time I, we went to go see it the first time, yeah. and then you went to go see it with your dad. Yeah, yeah. My, that's the first time my dad's ever seen a movie twice in theaters in like 20 years because he liked it so much. So it was a movie, I think definitely we got caught up in the hype, and it was just the visuals yeah. of it wanted you to come back because it was so crisp and looked so nice. I think if the vid- visuals were th- weren't were there, we would have a no, very, would, very unsuccessful movie. a very shitty movie, movie because there's no the story. Least. The yeah. visuals are, I think, what drives the rest of the movie is that it looks very pretty and it's nice. And, you know, you spend the, whatever, $14 to see yeah. it in 3D because it's so beautiful, dude. Like, I got caught up into that whole hype of, in the, like... In the beauty oh, of CGI. Yeah, did you see it? Yeah, it and like, then you It just, I'm, like... It's like CGI fucking porn, and you're, like, jerking off, and it's annoying. Yeah, it's, it's big-asms, basically. Which it is, is. Which is, like, a lot of it's just, like, big-asms. It's just, like, over-excessive amount of, like, action and, like, CGI and visual effects that, I mean, it doesn't really focus that much on substance. And, like, like this movie has an 80% on Rotten Tomatoes, but it's five years old, and, it, like, most of that is just... Back when, like, initially people just first saw it. And so all yeah. like, oh my god, did you see it? But this, this Tricking movie, off I mean, on right now. I think, it, I think it got a lot of praise because of, like, I don't know, the sort of revolutionary CGI they were doing. And oh, how, absolutely. How they sort of broke broke through. They broke I don't around. Know, broke the barrier, yeah, right. in terms I, of CGI. I, and I think that's where a lot of its praise co- came right. from as opposed to actual the actual story. Right, and I, I think I read somewhere that, like, James Cameron had, like, been working on this movie for, like, 10 years or something yeah. like yeah, that. Yeah, he'd been, like, writing it forever and, like, like, crafting it. And he spent, like, I heard he spent years on it, too. Yeah. But I mean, like, even if you look at it, like, the acting was shitty, too. Like, Sigourney Weaver was in it, right? Yeah. yeah the start, she was, and she was, was decent. Right. She was, yeah, the, the yeah. acting was decent. It was serviceable. Definitely serviceable. But, like, there was, it, like... It wasn't really standout or great, and it wasn't, like... Yeah, and you have, like, so many really good actors in it. Like, Stephen Lang, Sam Worthington. And, well, Sam Worthington is very missed these days. <laughs> His American uh, accent wasn't very good. No. I'll, I'll, no, no. No, that was not pretty. No, not at all. And then, it, I think it's always Saldana. I think she yeah. plays the, uh, the main... Uh, the, the, his main blue, Navi, his blue lover, the his Navi, blue lover, the yeah. Navi. yeah, the blue, the blue cat lady. And I love that th- there's the whole thing about every jokes about how like the hair things like a USB, and that was oh, just yeah. such a weird aspect of that where they like plugged into things. Like oh, yeah, that was just that, a that weird part weird. of that movie. And They're one with nature, Mitchell. yeah, uh, one with nature. And I mean, it was just like, oh, we live in a giant tree, and then they <laughs> they fly one helicopter in there, and they just fucking demolish this humongous tree that's probably been yeah. there for thousands of years. And I'm just like, really? It takes one helicopter to take out like a tree that's like, I don't know, ten thousand feet know, tall. No, it know? wasn't just one. It was like it, they brought like was a it a fucking, couple? Yeah. They, no, no, no. They brought the whole fucking like air base. It's been a, it's been a while since I've watched it. But yeah, no, they brought. It wasn't a lot. Base. Was it three but, or four? No, no, no. It was a shit ton. Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah, they brought like a shit ton. And then like the end of the movie, like. Because the whole point of the movie is just, like, this corporation is contracted by, like, the U.S. government or, like, the like, mm-hmm. human government Aren't or something like that. Aren't they looking for some material or yeah, something? Yeah, unobtainium. Yeah. yeah. It's, like, the, it's like the strongest rare. metal ever made. It's like that the only is under metal. the tree. And these, I feel like, I wonder if it was some sort of, like, narr- or like um, like, some sort of narrative or talk about, like... American conquest of Native Americans. Whatever James oh, yeah, Cameron Na- was trying I to do. I think, I think that's what he was going Britain, for. Great Britain. Was he trying to be very political? Like, I just came sure. in and took all their stuff and blew up their I'm trees. Sure. When you tell a story like this, I mean, you obviously are. But the thing that pisses me off is that, like, you have these bunch of, like, ten foot tall, like, blue people that are just, like, beating the shit out of these hardened... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah like, they man. lose. It's just like, you have bombers, you have mechs, you have all these, like, a military there, and you get beaten the shit out of by a bunch of natives with sticks. And they're like, but they're like 20 feet tall. They're tall blue nature. people, Matt. They're, they're tall, tall blue, blue people. people you never like, know. Yeah, and like, they, they come up, like, they, you can tell, they come up with this big excuse at the beginning of the movie where, like, they're big, they're strong, and their their bones are made of, like, a carbon fiber and shit. And I'm like, what? <laughs> they're big, they're strong, and they're not human. So they have some, better watch they have some pretty cool birds. I, so I didn't understand. Too. The whole story of it then is so that we put Sam Worthington or whatever reason to go in there and befriend them, and then they're just going to hand over all their yeah, precious it's, metals. It's just like, like I don't understand. No, 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 no. If the they wanted it, just, just like, fucking destroy the tree like, to begin with. Just... It's just like negotiation to get them to leave. Like that's the whole point of why he was there. He was just trying to get. Well, them it to seemed move. like that one general so that douchebag they... was ready to blow up the Take tree it regardless. regardless. I think Sigourney Weaver was the one person. I think that, that was said, just like oh, a no. contingency plan. Like he, yeah. like Stephen Lang's character. Uh, who who's the I don't know like general Colonel? douche general Brian America Colonel. douche yeah. yeah basically and he's just like he wanted to do that from the beginning but like so Granny Weaver is like on the other end of the spectrum where she's just like no we gotta no, like be peace friend. with them we gotta be their friends we gotta like do things the right way and like the head of the, the corporate douchebag dude is just like okay fine we'll do it your way but you got like 
this it's, some amount this of time amount to get time. in the league. Yeah. <laughs> we're coming in there, we're blowing shit up. Yeah, and I mean, I don't know. Overall, it wasn't, the story isn't too terrible, but it isn't much. It it's is not, very, it's, it's like really, I, like, bone dry, very, like, It's, it's, to not, the it's bone. unoriginal. Yeah. Very unoriginal. I right. think if he had tweaked the story a bit and made it a bit, a bit well, less, I, a, bit, a bit less preachy and a bit less cliche, <laughs> I think we could have had, we could have had a classic. But I think hands, he was just like, you I, know what, the CGI's kick ass, so I don't yeah. have to do much. We don't have to worry about like, this part as much. Their brains are going to explode when they see it anyway, so I think that, do you remember the part when the, they're fighting the general douche? And, and he has, like, a mech thing. Yeah, he's yeah. a mech. And he yeah. gets shot in the shoulder, and he just, like, fucking, bam, rips it out. Yeah. And I'm just like, Jesus, dude. Yeah, no, 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 no. That's that's not what happens. Like, he does get shot, and, he, like, he does die. But, I mean, like, there's, like, this this really weird sequence where he's, like, fighting in a mech and is, like, beating the shit out of this. And, like, like the the front of it, like, the, the casing or the carrier or whatever, like, the cockpit of the mech, like, the window breaks on it. So he's oh, got, yeah. like, the mask on. So he grabs a knife out, and, like, he starts oh, yeah. fighting the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's just, like... It's, it's just, so it's, strange. It, I mean, like you have to like admit though that like a lot of the 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 designs in it are like really good. So I mean, how do you guys feel about like the sequels? Like, do you guys think that it's I think they're worse? entirely unnecessary. I mean, if if we're not because there's two pretty. Cool <laughs> I would I like understand. to see. I would like to see some more pretty CGI and and breathtaking worlds, but I. I think they could be are, good are if, they if they change the story. There's, they, there's like supposed to be like two prequels and a sequel. Okay. Well, because what's the sequel going to be about? Because they got fucked up. I know one of them has to do with like Sigourney Weaver's character. Like, uh, oh, it, it's be, like it's like a prequel. Like her. Like, she going to become the martyr. The planet. She's become the that. martyr of the Navi and be like, "Wow, how dare you kill all of them? They were innocent." Giant it's, blue I, people. Like I don't metal. know. I don't know much about it. Like one of them's supposed to continue the story of like Sam Worthington's character, and like oh, one of, I don't know what one of the other shit one is. about him. Yeah. Yeah, and it's <laughs> I don't know. It's it's really. I think this is just like, a giant cash grab because they know that it was a huge movie and they're just gonna. Yeah. You know, when this movie comes out, it, like it, it's gonna have really good CGI. I, I mean, by the time this movie comes out, if it does come out, it'll be like seven, eight years, maybe yeah. nine years by the time it comes it. out. And I think people. I think people will have realized. And I mean. We've seen Force and Awakens, which had some amazing CGI, and there's been great strides that have made in this past, like, ten years on what they can do. So if it comes out in, yeah. you know, the next When's, couple of years, it's going to be very impressive. Which is looking. the first one? Are they doing the, the prequels first, or are they yeah, doing the I direct think it's sequel? Yeah, pre- I think they're doing the prequels first. It hits 2017, yeah. I don't okay. know, which, I don't know it's what it is. To, it's supposed to hit, hit like, next year. Like I, just, next year I think they might be behind on that a bit. I get the feeling. I think they're just like, hey, Star Wars is out. Let's see if we can, you know, people are going to be coming to the movies anyway. Let's throw out one of these fucking garbage, shitty-ass stories with cool CGI. And it's, it's going to make a billion or more. It's going to make a shitload of money. People be like, the it, first one was great, so I might it's as well gonna, see it. Yeah. I, th- I think easily it'll make over a billion dollars. I don't think it's going to hit the two billion. No. I really don't think it's going to have that much. I guess it depends dollars. on it's if it's like, good. Because people have, people have already really forgotten about like the first movie, and they, people have already realized that the first movie's not as good. It was just impressive CGI. Yeah. So this movie, if this movie delivers on substance, actually has like a good story, good acting, yeah. good Which dialogue. Because they, like the, they don't have the mind-blowing CGI gimmick. Which, I mean, James Cameron can do. When he wants to, James Cameron can deliver a very you know he can de- deliver a very riveting kind of movie I mean he's done that before like he directed Abyss or something like mm-hmm. that which I I never saw personally but I heard that movie was actually pretty damn good yeah I heard that as well yeah. but I mean he can do it I think he just got I don't know maybe lazy or uh, who knows yeah. maybe he got caught up with some sort of label or something maybe, or studio and they said maybe I, I'm not entirely sure what he was like going with with the story for it I think like I think really mainly it was just a message just mixed with like amaz- some of the most amazing visuals like he was yeah. trying to make his own Star Wars like yeah. he doesn't really have his own own original story or concept that actually like that was his makes it. yeah, it's, yeah. It's his own he doesn't really have that i mean he's not like uh steven spielberg has like a whole bunch of them. he has jaws he, i mean he has like uh yeah, saving, yeah. Saving, saving yeah. private ryan and, and like probably et are probably like his own yeah. like obviously jurassic park and jaws while being iconic movies are based off of books mm-hmm. but like james Cameron doesn't really have one because he's done the no. sequel to alien uh, he's Sequel to Terminator. Terminator, yeah, mm-hmm. but he doesn't have something of his own. I guess he has Titanic, but it's not really his either. No, because that's, yeah. that's a biopic kind of like yeah. you know, in a sort of that's, way. That's I think I think people attribute it to him a lot though. Like they'll say that was Cameron's, you know, like true because it is big. such a huge movie. But I mean, yeah. it isn't much. But it's not like it's not original though. No, I mean, it's, it's not. Yeah, definitely. Something. And I mean, maybe this was his stab at trying to be original, but it didn't turn it out wasn't. as great. It, it didn't. It didn't turn out as. Well I think as maybe great. you wanted something that was. It's. A, it's no. By no means is it like bad or no. terrible. It's, it's enjoyable like... to watch if you want something that's gonna like blow your fucking brains out and yeah. like, make you jizz everywhere. Then this is the. <laughs> that's film that's you the thing watch. for you. 
Yeah. I mean, how do you guys feel? Do you guys feel that this movie deserved $2.5 billion? I, I would no. say no. I would say it deserves a lot of money based on the, the, the visuals like, because I think they were amazing yeah. for the I'm, time. I'm not surprised. I think it was more of a gimmick movie than anything, yes. if I, I would, have to say. I would say this is about a 900 to like maybe a billion dollar movie just based off of like its accomplishments. I think it's one of the first, first films in a while, though, that like people saw multiple times like usually you see a film once but i think yeah. this was so like it was such a big deal when it came out that people were seeing it so many times it was like a fucking titanic situation all over yeah again. i know i know people i, just kept I went it twice all. to see it yeah yeah where a lot of people i know have seen it at least twice in theaters because i think just the visuals really what carried yeah. it like we've said but i don't think it deserves two billion and i was pissed off when they re-released it yeah it's only 13 oh, yeah. minutes of extra footage yeah 13 minutes yeah. dude grabbed another 500 million dollars out of it yeah. Yeah, that absolutely. pissed me off. Like, yeah, that was... it's absolute horseshit that people like. It just, I think, just the average viewer just really enjoyed. They liked what the they, they liked the scenery. I mean, even, yeah. even today, though, if you see like that movie on at like a retail store on like a big high definition TV, it still looks fucking amazing. Yeah, I mean, cool. yeah, it has a great sound design. It has a lot of. Experience. I can't deny that it, it was well crafted, but there wasn't much to it. Yeah. So how would you guys rate this movie? Mitch, why don't you start it off? How, how Are we going it? on the Ebert scale here? What, we're going the... out of 10. Gonna, okay. we, we, we do it out of 10. Here. All right, okay. Here. I give it probably like six and a half, maybe a seven. Because overall, it is enjoyable to watch, but there just isn't enough there to draw you in, really, other than just looking at something that looks pretty, and you're like, wow, that's beautiful to look at. I like that. Yeah, yeah I agree. I want to give it a 6.5 out of 10. I'd give it. I'd give it a seven on the on the merit that it did. It did catch me for a while with the message. Right. My heartstrings were tugged for a second, <laughs> right. and then uh, I don't know. There were some. There were some awfully cringy moments for me. I would say that. Yeah, yeah. Like, are you serious? Well, I mean, is this is this happening the, right the, now? The one thing is the love story between them wasn't too bad. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was. It wasn't forced. too bad. Yeah. It was, it was kind of natural. It was forced, I, though. It felt forced. Yeah. It, I didn't think it was too bad. It wasn't the worst I've ever seen. Like the fucking Transformers, Megan Fox, Shia LaBeouf. One, no, it's, it's not the, the worst I've ever worst, seen. But, I mean, it was just they, they're just to like. Yeah. It was just. It, it was there, so he had some attachment. Yeah, to, and yeah, it, it made him want to fight for them. You know, it yeah. was obviously a very forced like love, and, but and it, it didn't feel too bad on screen. It kind of felt like there's some needless things in the movie. You guys remember the one doctor, the goofy doctor dude, yeah, yeah the scientist. I, him. I mean, how do you guys feel about his character? You, you needed I mean, a little comic. A little... I think he was an attempt at some comic relief. That yeah, backfired. I mean, absolutely, bit. but they they already had that with like the corporate douchebag guy. Yeah, <laughs> I don't already, know if he, he was. Kind of I think I don't think he was meant to be funny though. I think I think he was written as like, actual he's supposed to be written as like super America G.I. Joe like badass and then he ended up being a stupid comedic relief character because he was so like not not, not 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 the uh, colonel dude, but like the the higher up the, corporate guy. The, yeah. the younger dude with glasses, like the Oh yeah, yeah that yeah, guy, that yeah. Guy. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how like there's there's <laughs> something like that, and then there's like Sigourney Weaver's character's death. I don't like she, if you think about good, it, yeah. I mean I it didn't really do anything. No. There was a lot of things that's I in think the movie her... that didn't really need to happen. Yeah. But I think they're just trying to like build up like, oh my god, what terrible times we're in. They're trying yeah. to build up on that whole like anticipation right. of the, what's going to happen. All right, so let's go ahead and wrap this up. Anyway, guys, uh, the next movie is supposed to come out at the end of next year. If you guys are interested in that, check it out. I probably won't be. Get your cause... tickets now. Yeah. <laughs> Buy them uh, early. So anyway, that thing. That's going to conclude this episode of Box Office and Vagasms. You know what we think about Avatar now and probably what we think about them making uh, sequels. Um, we have our first episode where we talk about uh, the Transformers series up on our channel right now. You can go ahead and check that out. And also we're continuing underappreciated. We have some other projects coming out very soon as well. Yes, yeah. and the next episode you'll see from this series is going to be uh, another James Cameron movie. Uh, we're going to talk about Titanic, the greatest cash grab heartthrob movie ever made and we'll see what we think about that but I think that most of us don't really like it that much yeah. but uh, no. make sure you check out other stuff we have uh, other gameplay videos we have a short film we got some documentary stuff and we're talking about doing a Pokemon Go documentary here soon yeah, um, that'll be sweet. That'll be I'll be riveting, though. I'm sure. And hopefully, <laughs> hopefully we'll, have Al, we'll have Al back soon again. Yeah, I'll, I'd love we'll to be on Al again. again soon. Spout some uh, fiery reviews. Yes, we yeah. appreciated Al's uh, presence, and yeah. thanks for watching, guys. Reach reductions.